today. I'm going to show you how to add new channels, customize channels, and most importantly, how to create repeater channels using the Wuxin Ocean programming software. I will explain all the steps in plain, simple English that anyone can understand. And most importantly, I will not bore you to death while doing it like so many other YouTube channels do. And even more importantly, I won't waste your time with a fancy stupid intro with stupid graphics and fancy music. I won't beg you to subscribe and I won't insult your intelligence by trying to explain what that bell is for because I have too much respect for you, my favorite viewer, unlike so many other YouTube channels. For demonstration purposes, I will be using my Wuxin Ocean KG935G GMRS radio, but the steps are pretty much the same for any Wuxin Ocean GMRS or ham radio, and pretty much the same for any brand radio and any software. Not exactly the same, but very similar. Most of the steps I'm gonna show you today are pretty much the same on any radio using any programming software, except for creating multiple custom repeater channels. Some radios don't support that. Before you attempt what I'm about to show you today, you will need a cable, a programming cable. This is what allows the binary bytes to get from your radio into your computer and more importantly, back from the computer into your radio. This particular cable is the Wuxin Ocean cable. It costs $15, affiliate link below. And even though it's a Wuxin Ocean cable, it works with any radio, any handheld radio that uses the standard K-type connector. And unlike many of the cheaper cables that you may find on Amazon, this one just works. You don't need any special software. You don't need any special drivers you plug it in and it works. That is not always the case with the cheapo ones that you find on Amazon and eBay for two or three dollars less. And I will be using the free Wuxin Ocean programming software. Pretty much every radio, every radio manufacturer has free software you can use. You will find third party software specifically for the Wuxin Ocean radios that cost 45 or $50 for software and a Cable. Some people say that software is better and easier to use than the free Wuxin Ocean software, but I find that the Wuxin software, Ocean, Wuxin, that software works just fine along with the $15 cable. The free Wuxin software, most free software for most manufacturers, is not perfect, but it's free and it works just fine for me in most cases. So no need to spend that extra $45 or $50 for the pro software. These steps are pretty straightforward. I will go through them step by step. This should actually be a pretty quick video because it's so simple. Step one is taking your cable and connecting it to your radio. It doesn't matter if the radio is off or on. Simply stick the plug into the hole and make sure it's pressed in all the way. Some radios and some cables are very tight and you may think it's in when it's not actually in. So make sure you press it firmly until you hear it click. The next step will be connecting your cable to your laptop computer, which usually goes something like this. The next step is to then fire up your software specific to your radio. In this case, I'm running the KG935 software from Wuxin Ocean. And you will usually need to find the COM port setting and tell it what COM port to use. Sometimes this will be automatic. Sometimes, as in this case, it will be obvious because the only one to select is COM3. Your computer will likely be different. You'll have to figure that part out on your own. Now, when you first open the software, you will find that there are already channels and frequencies and lots of stuffs in here already. This is not what is in your radio. You're not gonna see what's in your radio until you download it into the software. So this is just a default set of information in the software. So the first thing you normally would want to do is download everything that's in your radio into the software. And you can do that by selecting the option that says read from radio. In this case, other software may have different words, but the gist is get the data out of the radio. You will then see it's thinking, it's loading, 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 loading. And the read has succeeded. So now everything that was in the radio is now on my screen. 
across the top, you'll see several different tabs of different settings. I'll quickly go through a couple of those in a moment. Hold on, slow down. And then you've got your channel numbers here. You can scroll down to more channel numbers. How many channel numbers are there depends on the software and the radio that you're using. You see the RX frequency, that's receiving frequency. TX is transmit frequency. CTS and DCS tones for receiving and transmitting. Transmit power, wideband or narrowband setting. Settings that you probably don't care about and the channel name across the tabs here. And again, depending on what software you're using, it may be different, but generally you should be able to figure it out now that you know what you're looking for. These are configuration settings that you would change in the menu settings of the radio. For example, here is the Roger beep. You wanna be sure to turn that on. BOT is beginning of transmission. EOT is end of transmission. Both means beginning and the end. I'm going to set my Roger Beep to EOT, end of transmission. That way any ham radio operators that happen to be listening in on GMRS frequencies for unknown reasons will hear that Roger Beep and they will know that I'm serious about my GMRS radio operations. Other settings here, you can change them all. More settings here, FM broadcast memories. The Rock of the 80s. You can program the side keys here. Again, what you see will depend on what software you're using and which radio you have connected. But I could change what the buttons do if I wanted to. For example, if I want that to be the scan button, I just select the scan button. Ah, many people have asked about the showing the customized name on my radio. On this particular radio, on the KG935G, available only at buy2wayradios.com. You can change that right here. Just type in what you want to show. That will show up on the screen. Not all radios allow you to do that. The 935G does. So let's get back to the important stuff. So I have my channel memories here, frequency settings. Now let's say I want to change my channel number one to high power. I simply click there, hit the drop down button, change it to high. And let's say I want to customize the channel name. I can simply click in there and type in whatever I want within the limit of the characters. And there's my new channel name. Now it is important to remember that everything that we're doing here is only in the computer. It is not yet on the radio. So if I stopped right now, nothing would be changed in the radio. I'll show you how to make it actually take effect in the radio in a moment. Hold your horses, we'll get there in a minute. Now for regular GMRS channels, the receive and transmit frequency will always be the same. But when we get down into the repeater channels, that's when things get interesting and complicated. So now we're on our repeater channels, channels 23 through 30. And you can see that the receive frequency and the transmit frequency are different. They have a five megahertz split. Most repeaters will require a receive tone and a transmit tone. The repeater owner has to tell you what that tone is. There are ways you can scan for it, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about easy stuff today. This particular fictional repeater that we're configuring has a tone of 100. That means that my radio will now transmit CTCSS tone 100 so that the repeater can listen to and receive that tone. Many repeaters also have a receive tone, but that's usually optional, but you would enter that here. And to give it a custom name, we just type it there and hit enter. We now have a repeater configured for channel 23. I told you this would be easy. That's how easy it is, although we're not done yet. Remember, this is still only on the computer. It has not yet made it back into the radio. Now we will create a custom channel. The custom channel can be any frequency for receiving that's within the range of the particular radio that you're using. So let's say I want to listen to 468, 468, 700. I can turn the transmit frequency off because it's only gonna allow me to choose GMRS frequencies. So I'm gonna turn that off so I can now receive on 468-700. If there was a tone that was required, I could 
put that here. Now I did fail to mention before that when you're selecting a tone, the CTCSS tones are listed first, and then it starts in the DPL or DCS tones. You select the tone. Transmit power doesn't matter because we're not transmitting. And we put in our custom channel name, and we now have a custom channel. You will notice that I didn't put it at channel 31 or 32, I put it at channel 33. Channel 31 and 32 will still be blank. I can use any channel number that I want. It really does not matter. And now we'll program a custom repeater. So we're already using repeater number 23 at 462550. That's my neighborhood fictional repeater. Now let's imagine for a moment that there was another repeater in my neighborhood that was on the same frequency and had different tones. Or maybe it's not in my neighborhood, it's somewhere that I travel to. Many radios won't allow you to do that. The KG935G and most Wuxin radios will allow you to do that. So to create that custom repeater channel, I've decided I want mine to show on channel 45, because why not? Now I could just start typing the frequencies in, but I'm not a savage. So because it's using the same frequency as channel 23, I'm just gonna edit and copy that, and then come down and paste it. As a starting point, I could change either of these, but now really all I need to do is change the tones. Say there is no receive tone. So I now have my second repeater on 462550. I have assigned it channel 45, and I'm going to give it a name. So I now have my repeater channel 23 with my custom tones and custom name. Channel 33 I've assigned to this custom receive only frequency. And channel 45 I've set to my best repeater ever, which happens to be the same as channel 23, except with different tones. As I've mentioned now several times, all of these frequencies, everything that I've changed, any of these other settings that I've changed are still only living in my computer screen and my imagination. So now to get it into the radio, where it matters, I have to write it to the radio or send it to the radio. So I will select that option, or I could press the button. They do the same thing. And you will see down below, it is making its progress as it's writing my changes to the radio. It has completed its write to the radio. Usually the radio will reset, which mine just did. And we will now see that my custom channel one is showing on the screen. And if I go through the channels, there's my fictional repeater. There's my fun time channel, 33, and channel 45, the best repeater that I programmed. They are now stored in the radio. And that is it. All of my custom channels are now in my radio and ready for use. If you have any questions about programming your radio, the Wuxin software, or any other software, leave a comment below. Dickhead comments, know-it-all comments, and any comments demonstrating the superior stupidity of the author will be pinned to the top for everyone to make fun of, you have been warned. <laughs>